everyone. Thanks for joining us again. My name is Stephanie Fender and I am with Colveros. I am their senior training sales manager. I work with clients and our team members to deliver successful training engagements. Hey everyone, I'm Mike Sowers. I'm the executive vice president here at Coveros and I lead both our consulting as well as our training line of business. Great to be with you today, Stephanie. Thanks for joining. So Mike, tell us what a learning journey is. Sure, uh, I think about learning journeys as learning experiences. Uh, there are combinations of courses hands-on workshops and mentoring and coaching that really accelerates skill development by providing class participants with a series of related training experiences. Uh, if you think about a learning journey, it can be customized based on the needs of the organization and its goal is to help organizations accelerate a series of learning experiences, or you can actually spread out that learning over time. So why, why are we creating these, these learning paths and these learning journeys for our clients? Is, you know, training not enough anymore? Yeah, you're right on it. You you hit the nail right on, on the head. And I think many organizations are, you know, realizing that mm -hmm. uh, there are really many reasons why these learning journey journeys are more effective. But two key reasons are that many training organizations and trainers, whether those are internal or external, they focus on individual training courses and there's a lack of a roadmap to success for particular roles. I mean, all of us want to know where we're headed from a career perspective. And so we want to know uh, what learning and what training we need and core competencies we need to develop to get there, right? Mm -hmm. Many studies have also shown that if we take a training course within 24 hours of taking that training course, we forget 70% of wow. what we learned. So training is great for introducing, you know, practices and concepts. Uh, however, a significant amount of knowledge gained during a training course is lost quickly if that training is not immediately coupled with hands-on use of those practices uh -huh. that were introduced. And ideally that hands-on use for those practices is coupled, that is it's aligned with real world projects and in the presence of a subject matter expert. Mm -hmm. So what we like to do is a little bit of training and then some hands-on practice and then some mentor uh, coaching, all right? So they're actually working on real work while they're being coached and mentored after they they've learned from training. Exactly right. Okay. And and as you I know you've seen and perhaps our audience has seen uh, as well, you know, corporate learning uh, initiatives mm -hmm. can struggle without defining these training paths for individuals and teams uh, over time. So these defined learning paths actually help us create a more structured learning experience, right? where we have learning and then feedback becomes continuous. And then this fosters what we're all driving for from an agile and DevOps perspective, that is a learning culture within the organization. Uh -huh. So who can benefit from these learning paths and learning journeys? Is this an individual approach or for teams, you know, enterprises? Dive a little bit more, uh, dive deeper into that for us. Yeah, you've 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 touched on uh, all the all the right uh, people that would benefit from from this. Uh, you know, to remain competitive, nearly all organizations are implementing transformation initiatives. Mm -hmm. They want to move their organization, their people, their processes, their technology from their current capability to some future desired state or mm -hmm. capability. 
right, while still making sure that they meet the needs of their customer, they deliver on time, and deliver those quality levels. What learning journeys do, and those paved paths that Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about, they benefit enterprises, they benefit line of business leaders, teams, uh, teams of teams, and allow them to quickly move the needle on learning new skills and then ratcheting up the existing core competencies. We've configured uh, several uh, learning uh, paths for testing roles, for developer roles, uh, security and automation roles, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, One other example would be uh, manual testers. Uh, Many organizations are moving rapidly to embrace automation uh, today. And so they'd like their people that were involved, their team members that were involved in manual testing uh, to embrace automation, right? Uh, Or move from product or uh, project role, you know, into a scrum master Uh uh, or an agile engineer to a DevOps engineer and so forth. Okay, do we have, I know we are not going to name the client, but can you give us an example of where and how this worked at a client site? Sure, Uh, we recently worked with a line of business leader at a large uh, international bank. Uh, That client, uh, we tailored and implemented a learning journey for their DevOps transformation effort. Right. Uh, This uh, learning journey included our foundation of DevOps uh, course, and then it was followed by hands on learning on specific DevOps tools such as Kubernetes uh, and Jenkins. And then we embedded our mentors and coaches into that DevOps team to help them then onboard new application components onto the bank's CI and CD, continuous integration and continuous delivery uh, pipeline. Uh, A very fascinating result. Uh, We actually reduced the code delivery time from about four weeks to less than four hours. So that's a real concrete example Mm -hmm. of how we can work with an enterprise, work with a line of business leader, tailor these learning journeys, and then significantly move the needle on the core competencies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a, a key challenge in an organization today, as you and I have talked about uh, earlier, is implementing this continuous learning culture, right? Mm-hmm. And so some believe that a choice has to be made between either delivering value to your client, Mm -hmm. right, or investing in learning Mm -hmm. and improvement, right? It's it's a trade-off. You can do one or the other. Well, that just doesn't work in today's competitive environment. We have to invest in both. You know, technology continues to change and advance, and therefore, so must our team members' core competencies, right? Mm-hmm. So how we learn, how you know, how is it that we learn while we continue to deliver? Uh, we've designed a few flexible approaches here. Uh, we can leverage those approaches that you just talked about, you know, through the way that we deliver training, either on site, uh, virtually, through pre-conference training, some blend uh, mm-hmm. of that, right? Uh, We can also then work with the teams on what we call learning sprints, right? Uh, Learning sprints allow teams to either during their planning stage, such as say a sprint uh, zero, uh, allocate some time for training, or they can take points from their project sprint and allocate those uh, to learning. Uh, So the idea here is to get a little bit of training, either right at the front end of your sprint Uh Uh or to do learning during, right, a Uh sprint, right? And then our our, uh, 
third approach, I guess, there is to embed and pair our covariance engineers and coaches and consultants with the teams while they carry out their everyday work. And so you've either got uh, covariance engineers that are doing hands-on work with one or more uh, other individuals, uh, or stepping back and observe them working and then doing some mentor coaching in regard to that work, right? And so the benefit of this approach to learning, you know, learning by doing and still meeting our customers' needs, right? Uh, those strategies benefit the company and the teams, right? Helping to avoid, you know, either role or core competency, core competency stagnation, right? Or burnout, while still instill, instilling a learning uh, culture, and then continuing to meet those delivery commitments. Essentially, it's integrated learning. Uh huh. How do we get started? How can we tell our, our clients and our customers to get started? I know that they can reach out to me for more information. Happy to help. Um, but just high level, you know, what is your recommendation? Yeah, my number one recommendation, of course, is, is to reach out to experts and learning specialists like yourself and really have a conversation because every organization is different, every team is different, uh, your goals, your strategies, where you are in your transformation journey uh, is different. And so it's not a one size fits all. We really wanna tailor and customize that to that individual enterprise organization or teams of teams need. So, you know, number one for me would be to speak to someone like yourself, uh, Stephanie. Uh, short of that, you can also visit our Coveros website, coveros.com, and you can click on the training and coaching pages. And so you can get a better idea of what we have available there right out of the box from a training path perspective. Find out a little bit more about learning journeys uh, and then pick up the phone and uh, make the call. Yeah, so I can't thank you enough for your time today, Mike. This was extremely helpful for myself and I hope for our clients too. Um, just to remind everyone, my name is Stephanie Bender. You can reach me at 904-278-2104 or stephanie.bender at coveros.com and I am more than happy to help guide you through a learning path or a learning journey. Awesome. Great to be with you too, uh, Stephanie. And uh, I'm excited to have these learning journeys where we can meet people, you know, where they are and integrate learning with getting their work done. Yes.